Okay, so I'm sticking my camera in the radiator here. I'm wanting to see how plugged up. So far, they're all pretty open. Keep going. So I can see each individual. There's a little bit of corrosion around the outsides, but the inside, which is where the water flows, that one's got a little over the edge, but that's not too bad. I was worried because this engine had overheated that maybe the radiator was all plugged up. But everything I'm seeing is pretty open in there. Go back the other way. Okay, I'm going to slide this in the other way. I can't see anything the other way. Yeah, they're all pretty open. Okay, so I, so I was concerned about, so we know that we're good to go there. Okay. I'm trying to take off this thermostat housing, that thermostat cap on there. Oh. It's going to be hard to get off. They usually are. I've already taken the other one, the replacement one, is off the other engine. But the problem is, is that this is cast aluminum. And then the studs that go through here are steel and they really corrode to each other. So we'll see how it, how well it comes apart. The one on the other engine came off pretty easy. Easiest I've ever had one of these come off. So I don't think I'll be that lucky twice in a row. Got four bolts that hold it on. This is, in case I have a problem and I break it and I got to replace the whole thing, that's why I didn't put the engine up against the wall. There's little washers on here. That, there we go. If I'm going to have any luck of the coil working its magic back there, I'm going to get everything off. Break out the oxyacetylene torch here. This is really the only way to try and get these thermostat housing separated once they're really corroded like that. Um, I mean, I hate doing this. I don't want to catch the bus on fire, but it's all pretty clean back there, so I shouldn't really have any issues. I do have my fire extinguisher in the golf cart just in case. So heat it up here and see what happens. Well, I let this soaking in coil. I came by every day this weekend uh, from Friday until Monday and sprayed these down. Tapped it with a sledgehammer just to get some vibration going on. Uh, mini sledge. And then uh, today, which is Tuesday, I finally got it loose. I can't get the rear. There's one bolt that's still on there on the back. I don't know if you can see this back here or not. It was stripped out um, and it's back in the corner. I can only get it so far before it hits the housing and it needed to be lift up off of there before I could get it all the way off. So now that it's loose and I'm using some 
pliers. Definitely not the right tool, but I can't get a wrench on it. Um, and just, these are the, what are they, Nipex or whatever they're called. Um, the Cobras, they're really good at gripping it and they're spinning it and getting it off. So I'm just about ready to get it off here now. Just need to, you don't have a lot of room here. And this that's why I left the engine tipped away because the, the firewall is right here and I needed room to get in there. Uh, hopefully, I, originally I didn't know if I was gonna change the whole housing. Um, I thought I, I just needed to change the end piece, but I cracked the housing on the end right there when I was trying to get it apart. It just wasn't coming. Okay, I finally got the thermostat housing off that needed to come out. Um, but what I just noticed is how contaminated the cooling system is in here. I don't know if you can see down in there. So I was going, so we're replacing that with this one here. Um, and like the thermostat, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna take it out and test it just to make sure that it's working good, but it looks to be in good shape. This thermostat over here is for the other, the heating system inside the bus. Um, this one is just nasty looking in there. This is the donor motor. So anyways, because the cooling system on the donor motor has so much contamination in it, and I'm gonna be taking apart this radiator uh, to take it into the welder. And then I'm going to go, since I have it apart, I'm going to go ahead and rod it out because this needs to get fixed here where it's got these little hairline cracks and it got JB Weld on it. That it has to be leaking there. It's been welded before and it's leaking where it was welded. But anyways, the cooling system is so contaminated. I am not going to take this apart, clean it, put it back on, run the motor and get all that contamination back in my radiator that I'm just going to clean. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm making the executive decision. I'm going to put this motor together and run it now, get it running. I'm gonna flush the cooling system a few times in it, uh, just with regular water. Just run it, flush it, run it, flush it, run it, flush it. And then I'll take the radiator back off. Like I won't permanently mount it. I'll just put the one main bolt. It's not gonna go down the road. The, the one that hangs on, on the top here and I'll hook the hoses up to it. And um, so it'll be relatively easy. I'm not putting all the, the door back on and all that stuff. But that way I can flush the cooling system before I take the radiator apart. I just don't want to recontaminate that radiator. And there's a lot of crap in that cooling system. So uh, flushing it is going to be the way to go. Hopefully the oil cooler is not affected. It's not that hard to change an oil cooler on here. Um, and we have a donor oil cooler on the other bus that I could take off if I needed to. But uh, we'll keep an eye on it and get it flushed out. And then I'll have to, you know, but at least now I can get it running, uh, set up, hooked up here, running. And then I'll take the radiator back off and send the radiator in. So making progress, you know, one step forward, two steps backwards kind of thing. Um, changing that thermostat housing was something I did not want to have to do, but unfortunately that became a necessity. Um, and the old engine was plumbed just a little bit different, so I got to make a few little changes on it, but uh, I'll get it all done here in just a little bit. Just got a little easy out in this fitting for the fuel filter that got broken. challenge. Kelly's cutting gaskets today for the water manifold housing, radiator, uh, thermostat housing, etc. We don't want to just use Permatex on it. I don't like using Permatex on the cooling system. You're about good. on the bottom there. That's all chunks. Can you see all those big chunks coming out of the cooling system? And that's just a little bit of it. And this aluminum has holes eaten all the way through it. Can you see how deep that is? Okay. Even my good thermostat housing here has been welded together. They always, that always happens because of the corrosion and getting them apart. So this one's been welded, but it wasn't leaking when we had it here. So hopefully it's good.
t-shirt down there. <laughs> flapper works which it does okay I'm ready to made it back up okay, I'm gonna go check my drive shaft to make sure it's not binding back there but I want to have a safety in case my harbor jack harbor freight jack fails We're hitting over here. Positioning my safeties. <laughs> oh, is that one looking over there? It's got to go up a little higher before it all line up. Quite there, but it's close. Just a safety. <laughs> Put a lot of faith on it. It will need to be tapped back a little bit. So I gotta go up a little bit higher. Just a tad bit, but then it'll need to be tapped back some. Say when. That might do it once it gets tapped back. Because it's too far forward. It's not gonna, it's gonna be very close. Go up a hair more. That could do it right there. Pull it back. A little crooked. There you go.
just a hair more. There you go. Seems like it's angled up a little bit. Crap. You went too far. I would try, don't, don't, nope. You need to go back down again and not put it back up. Good. Yay. These hoses are all pretty much so like new condition, so I'm reusing these. These are better than the ones. The ones that came on the engine are nasty. But these are like new. Probably just a couple years old. Now when you put this on, you need to be careful that you, because this can be pushed further this way, but you don't want it to be because you won't be able to get your valve cover off or if you turn it, turn it at the wrong angle, but you need to push it in more this way and leave more exposed over there. This is the end of the metal pipe right here. So there's plenty of surface area on it and this ends beyond that clamp there. So that's good. I have it out of the way enough for the valve cover. It'll lift off.